Hey everybody, Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to Gorkamorka Season 1. Now this was recorded and put out quite a while ago, but thanks to our recent 24-hour live stream, we're going to be posting the entire season for free, whereas only one out of every two or three episodes was posted for free before. So if you've never seen it, oh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I want to point out one quick thing. In Season 1, I thought that I could do a good job of updating the Gorkamorka rules because they were so old. Turns out I was wrong. But we still had a ton of fun, and the viewers seemed to really enjoy it regardless. Because it's just, don't worry about the rules. Just watch the orc shenanigans, the squiggers of the dune, and all these vehicles mad maxing back and forth. And thank you once again to the people who donated on the 24-hour live stream to make this a reality. So sit back and enjoy Gorka Morka! Everybody, Matthew and Josh here from MiniWarGaming.com, and welcome to week four of Gorka Morka Narrative Campaign. Not gonna dance. I'm not much of a dancer. Not much of a dancer. No. <laughs> Don't get on the dance floor, you're like. <laughs> Pretty steady beat, yeah, I know. <laughs> You've done this before, sir. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I used to do, do all the rave clubs. Yeah, not really. But anyway, I'm really excited for this week, if you can't tell, yeah. because I actually get to play, because we're gonna be doing digging knobs versus the Desert, desert Squigs. Desert squigs. Yep. I'm like, it's, it's been a couple of weeks since we recorded <laughs> one of these. Actually, it's been like three weeks. Since I've because, been able to be in one, yeah. Yeah, and since I've actually done one too. Mm -hmm. We missed the past couple of weeks due to illness and other stuff. But that is what it is. So I'm really excited because I get to play Digging Knobs. Now, the way that we did this, obviously I'm playing it as an NPC, so I don't have any mob progression. Uh, it didn't even, I, I gave one of the trucks, I, I gave the trucks some uh, upgrades based on how Lee actually created them. Lee is fantastic and he made an entire Diganob squad. It's about 320 mob rating, so I'm able to kind of scale it to what we need to do. Mm -hmm. I've also got a Muti squad with a at least a couple hundred mob rating that'll be in the next video, which will be in the mini wargaming vault. That'll be a muti attack, which will be a lot of fun too because they're totally different than this. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I haven't looked at the muti rules a whole lot, but I'm glad I'm not facing them. Yeah, you're glad to face they the digging knobs. Yeah, the digging knobs are essentially humans who want to be orcs, and they're the ones that uh, live in the pyramids with the necrons. And uh, they come out and they kind of try to act like orcs. In the, the whole campaign, they, they work differently. But in the game themselves, it's not too much of a difference, except they're all toughness three. Mm -hmm. Other than that, their stat lines are pretty much the same. Now, we are going to be changing the movement rules starting this week. We're actually going to change them back to the original Gorka Morka rules. It's funny, as, as we've progressed, I've come to appreciate more of the original rules. When I first read through them, it felt like they needed a lot of changes. And there's definitely some things that needed to be updated and changed, especially like the income system, if you actually want to make any teeth. But uh, we're going to go back to their original movement rules, which we'll talk about once I show you the table so I can demonstrate it. And so I asked Josh what he, how much he wanted to face. He, ha he had a choice. He, as, as he could go as low as the same mob rating as himself, mm -hmm. and he could then go as high as what I was able to bring. And so he wanted, of course, the higher I go, the more experience his guys get, even if he loses. And so he decided on the 21 to 25 bracket, which gives him an extra four experience per guy if he loses, and, and five, five if he wins. Win. Yeah. Yes. And your guys are all souped up, whereas my guys are all noobs. So that gives me more guys on the table. Well, it, they seem souped up, but I still got a bunch of youths. That's true it's too. Still a good chunk of youths in the yeah. list. Yeah. So we're we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the digging knob and his mob as well, so you can see where we're at. And then we're gonna be playing a scenario. We was here first, where there's the scrap markers all over the table, and we're both gonna go for them and try to get them. And I will, as even though I'm an NPC, I will still prioritize scrap counters mm -hmm. whenever it makes sense. Like I'll pretend that I care about the scrap counters to make sure we kind of get what would appear to be a normal fight, because we're not gonna have progression with these digging knobs. And then of course, once you're done watching this one, there will be other Gorka Morka battle reports in the video description below for our vault members. Now, one thing I should point out, if you got the special offer during the first week, that, that link won't work. You need to go to miniwargaming.com slash downloads, and that's where you will find all the new stuff. Because some people have been like, hey, I've been clicking them and it's not working. And that's, that was my bad, actually. I should have been more clear that you go to miniwargaming.com slash downloads to get the vault ones if you signed up for that special offer during the first week. And of course, you can go to miniwargaming.com slash gorkamorka to download our custom rules, which keep changing and also check out other resources there for it. So let's take a look at the mobs and the scenario. And here we have my mob of Digga Once again, 
Lee made this. There's actually more than this because he, I wanted to be able to have some flexibility and what that could bring for the NPCs and in case we wanted to bring more or just different. So the dig -a -mob works like, or dig -a -mob works a lot like the orc mob. Uh, the campaign wise, they they function a little differently, but basically all that you know about the Gorka Morka so far, a lot of it can be translated just when you look at these guys, they've got a toughness of three instead of a toughness of four. And that is about the only difference in this case. And so we have a dig a knob, and he is armed with a sluggish off of flak. And I think he's got grenades as well, or stick bombs. And then we've got just uh, three dig a boys, and one's got a huge choppa, and one's got slug a choppa. And the other one's got a blunderbuss, so it's good at short range. And then we've got a bike with a guy with a slugger and crack stick bombs. And we got truck number one right here. And it even has this cool canopy thing. It's got two boarding planks because it looks cool. And a reinforced ram and an Evi shooter with obviously a boy manning that and a boy driving it. There's actually no... Um, no spanners in this. They don't require to have anything to take care of their vehicles. And that's actually a disadvantage they have in the campaign because they have to go to Mech Town even for their basic Gubbins upgrades. And then we've got another truck over here with a Twin Link Scorcha with a boy and another boy driving. And so that's a lot of fun. And this whole thing is in the 21 to 25 over you, the uh, other mob rating, which will give him the advantage there when it comes to experience points afterwards. But obviously gives me an advantage when it comes to just number of guys. And then over here we got the Desert Squigs. I know you may not be able to see them because of their camo, but they are there, I promise. And we're going to walk through this because there's a lot of different upgrades that they have at this point. We need a refresher because we haven't seen Josh for there's a little a while. There's a whole bunch. So, so let, let's, let's go over the most important stuff. Let's start with this truck. What upgrades does this so truck have? that truck, the track, the, the track, shootier sorry. upgrade for the rocket on it. So the shootier gives it sustained fire? No, it's the plus one strength. Oh, so not more DACA. More, yeah, more shooty, you're right. Yeah. So plus one strength. So it's a strength seven rocket launcher now. It is. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, driving that, we have a grot, my spanner, who's been with me since the beginning. So. Well, he's not a grot, he's an orc. No, he's a grot. A grot? Yeah. I thought you said he's a grot. No, no, no. no. And I'm he's, like, no, he's, he's not a grot. A grot the spanner. A grot the spanner. I'm like, wait a second. That's, that's some serious camouflage there. Uh, flak armor and a slugger, and then plus one leadership when he's driving. Then we've got my gunner, Snotgob. He's up to... He got a bonus for his weapon skill, so he's weapon skill 4 and 2 wounds. He has minus 1 movement with his injured leg, but he's never really been out of the truck. Yeah, Not worried about that. He re-rolls to wound when he's shooting, and he's minus 1 ballistic skill to shoot at. Oh, wow. So he's harder to hit. What about this other truck? So the other truck, my buggy. buggy there, has the ardor upgrade. So plus 1 armor all around? You bet. And the spanner there, nothing really special. He is up to weapon skill 4, though. Well, that'll matter in a fight if he gets boarded and he's all alone. And then we got your knob. The knob has a ton of upgrades. So Rotskob, he's up to weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 5, strength 4, 2 wounds, initiative 5. Whew. Uh, he's got his heavy armor, huge choppa, and a shooter. And his shoot is at plus 1 strength right now. So it's a strength 5 shooter? Yep. Awesome. Any other upgrades on him? That's, no, that's him. What about this guy? That's youth number two. I haven't named him yet. <laughs> youth number two. <laughs> Nothing really and special. He's going to shoot it, and he's minus one ballistic skill to shoot at. Okay, so he can dodge. And what about these two guys? Uh, the other two youths. So we have one youth with the two choppas, flock armor, and he is slippery. So if he's captured, he's not captured. Okay, so captured counts as full recovery. And he's minus one to shoot at as well. Ooh, so he likes to dodge as well. You got a bunch of dodgers here. Well, it's camouflage. Oh, right. It's the camo. It's the camo <laughs> it's pants. It's finally working. It's the camo pants. <laughs> uh, the other youth there, he has his shoot up and uh, flak armor, and he is toughness four, two wounds. So he's regular toughness then. Oh, no, he's a youth, so he's up to toughness four. He's up to toughness four, so that means when he becomes he grows a boy. Into a boy, he'll be toughness five. Yeah, that's right. And two wounds. So he's a tough little youth. And that is your mob with a rating of 180, is that correct? It's 180, correct? yeah. Yes, and then my mob had a rating of 204 or 203, something like that. So we need to discuss the new movement rules, or as I should say, the old movement rules. And this only affects models on foot. Essentially, this, there's a couple things that we're doing. Uh, one is that we're reducing the movement of guys on foot down to four. 
just like they originally were. This has been after some feedback, but also just we did the one chase, and it felt weird that guys could keep up with trucks. Uh, which they could, they could possibly if the truck doesn't thrust. But other than that, they should the, they shouldn't be able to keep up with them. And the second thing is, then the way that they run and charge is it's back to the original way. So this guy in the moving phase, he can move four inches, or he can run eight inches. So he doesn't run in the shooting phase, but he is not allowed to shoot if he runs. And he can charge by moving eight inches into base contact with an enemy. And that's also in the movement phase. So there's no way to shoot and then charge. So this will really nerf guys on foot, which I think is important for this because it'll make the vehicles that much more important. It'll also make just the distances that people can cover because you could have moved six before and then charge on average another seven inches. That's a 13 inch movement right there when the original Gorka Morka only had you moving eight inches. And so I am going to go back to that. It's funny, the more I play Gorka Morka, the more I'm reverting my change rules back to the original ones. I don't think I would revert all of them, but the, it definitely I, I'm starting to appreciate more of how the original rules worked. Now, I know that was just second edition 40k, but uh, for Gorka Morka specifically, because the game was designed around that, uh, it's, it's, if you change one thing, it snowballs and having to change so many other things. So, so we are going to do that now. So as we play, hopefully you'll see how that works, and I'll try to explain it a few times for the first few times. For the rest of the campaign, we should be sticking to that. You rolled off, and uh, Josh got to place his mob first. Basically, we was your first, you roll off, and the winner gets to choose a table side, and then deploy his mob wholly within eight inches of it, and then the opponent deploys wholly within eight inches of the opposite one. So we've got his buggy with his knob, and then the youth, and then the driver right there, and then his track, the rocket launcher, with his guys inside the other youths inside of that one as well. Getting ready to grab scrap. And uh, I then deployed on the opposite end, my knob is inside of the truck with the with the sunroof because they need to be protected from the sun because they're not orcs, even though they'd like to be. And so this desert is actually quite toxic to them, so they need some shade. And so the knob gets to drive in that one. And then over here we've got the other boys, the digger boys, with the faster little buggy because it's got plus two inch thrust thanks to its faster upgrade. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it has that and the Twinlink Scorch as well, and then our little war bike as well. I should point out that on each of the two trucks or buggies that the gunners each have crack stick bombs and the drivers each have frag stick bombs. And so if for some reason they're not able to use their guns, then they have a backup plan at the very least when they get close. Although I think that when this guy gets close with his Scorcha, he's not going to be wanting to use his crack stick bombs. But we'll just have to wait and see. So now we roll off and the winner gets to go first. I roll three, and you roll three, a re-roll, one, two, you beat it. <laughs> Choice is good. Choice is good. So you get to go first then. So, Desert Squigs, turn one. Start with my track, and he's gonna go and not do any turns and just move up his six to right there. Buggy over here is gonna start by going forward three, and then just a slight turn, and then go forward another three, another slight little turn. Boy with the shooter is going to jump off. So side, on the side. He can jump off either side or this side? Either side or the back. So but not the front, otherwise he gets run over. He'll go there and then move his four up to be base with that. Yeah, so this changes things a little bit because if you run eight inches and get in base contact with scrap, you get to pick it up. So it helps a little bit to grab scrap because you get to move eight inches to grab it rather than just six inches with our older rules. That's it for your turn. Well, I'm going to call you a cowardly grot. Well, I got to hear you do it. Issue a challenge, you're cowardly grot. That's the best orc voice you can do. I can't do an orc voice. Do an orc voice, man. You want to go deeper? Yeah. You're cowardly, Grot! Oi! What you caught me? <coughs> oh, that really hurts my throat. I accept! <laughs> the Your Cowardly Grot is a scenario specific rule that basically the knobs can challenge each other. Once the challenge is accepted, the knobs cannot shoot at anything else except them or the vehicle they're in. It doesn't stop them from charging whoever the heck they want. So basically, this nerfs my Slugga and it nerfs your Shooter to only fire at each other or the vehicles that we're in. And that challenge ends. Obviously, when one of them dies, or if you get into close combat, then it immediately ends. On to my turn, the bike's gonna go, and it's gonna take a free thrust after. No, it's not gonna. It'll turn slightly. 
And I'm gonna thrust forward another six inches on a two plus. I make it. So it goes up to here. He's going to attempt a turn, leadership seven, which he makes. So he's just gonna turn slightly like this. Then he's gonna thrust forward another six inches to get into his crack stick bomb range on a three plus. He got it. So up he goes. Uh oh. And then my little buggy with the scorcha is gonna move up here, turn slightly, and then it's going to thrust ahead eight inches. On a two plus. Woohoo! And there he goes. It's going to attempt a turn, leadership seven. He fails. When you fail a turn after a thrust, you move forward d6 inches and your move ends. So three inches. Boom. This buggy can move up six inches and then turn to face your guy over there. And then we're gonna have the dig a boy disembark and move eight inches to pick up this scrap. Hmm. Right, I gotta go back to that. I'm gonna have the dig a boy with the blunderbuss try to get off this truck, but it thrusts it, so he has to take an initiative test, initiative three, which he fails. So he just falls on his face. On a four plus, he takes a strength three hit. He does not. But he just ends up, sorry, right beside the truck where he was gonna be. I was gonna have him run up to grab this scrap, but no dice. So the heavy shooter from the truck is going to fire all the way over at your big old track there. Full auto. We got full auto, we got two sustained fire dice for the heavy shooter, and he gets oh, only two shots, but no jams. So I hit on fours, I didn't thrust, so just use my regular blitz skill of three. One hit. So first we gotta do the hit location, which is three, which is your gubbins. Do you have gubbins on that truck? That truck does not have any gubbins. Well then it's an engine hit, which is kind of dangerous because you don't have extra armor on that truck, right? I do not. So it's a strength five hit against armor 10. The engines are armor 10, so you get five. No, you're lucky. The boy in the bike is gonna huck eight inches, a crack stick bomb, which gets hot and has vehicle busta. But he thrusted, so he's hit it on fives, and a one will be, um, gets hot. Ooh, he hits! Oh, no. a six. A vehicle busta, it hits a vehicle D three times. Three times, uh-oh. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> so hit locations, we got three of them. Uh, that's a oh, two engines, and the, and the crew, which will be your knob. Now, thankfully your buggy has extra armor, so you're armor nine for your crew, so I need to roll three or higher to 10, which I do. Hmm. Hmm. See the result is a five, which is the crewman is hit by shrapnel, which we're doing a strength four. Toughness of your knob is just four, right? He's four. Does he have two wounds, though? He has two wounds. Ah, oh, so he'll be fine. So four is the wound. Nothing. Attaboy, Rats Gob. Then we got the two hits against the engines. You resolve one at a time? Well, well, we'll just roll them both and resolve them one at a time, because it doesn't really matter, right? And so strength six against armor 11, though, so we need fives. Oh, you're There lucky. we go. Back to Josh's turn. Yeah, uh, we're gonna start with having the buggy go. I'm gonna do just the full six ahead. And then turn. And then. Oh, turn like that. You don't wanna try to ram me head on? No. No, don't I'm feel like scared it. of the bike. The boss is jumping off the side of the vehicle. And then. I'm gonna charge my buggy? Yeah, he's gonna charge the buggy. Go for it. Eight inch charge. You know you're already in range. Yep. Just go ahead, you have to get to the side, which you do. And now you have to pass an initiative test, but you're initiative five, because you're awesome. And <laughs> once you get on there. I'm super awesome. I am in trouble. So go ahead, initiative five test. Oh, you oh, failed no! it! You failed it! Oh no! Oh, oh no. no. So on a four plus, you take a strength three hit. You take a strength three hit, which wounds you on a five. Which, uh, yeah, roll it again, roll. roll again. Does not wound you. I'm gonna have the buggy thrust. He's gonna try to go forward four inches. I'm a two plus. Two, he got it. There. Is he gonna try a turn? Or is he happy with where he he's is? He's happy where he's at. Track, the track, way. move up to there. You wanna turn it all? I'll turn ever so slightly. You're doing heavy shooter at me. I do rocket launcher at you. And you're just out of range of your rocket launcher. So you want to thrust forward? He is going to thrust forward, yeah. How far? Uh, let's say two. T2. 
two inches, two plus. Whoo! You never, two plus rolls have never seemed so terrifying until you try to thrust with the vehicle. Let's start with the rocket going into your truck. Okay, now you thrusted. Do you have a bonus ballistic skill on he your gunner? He does not have a bonus ballistic skill. Wait, you don't have a ballistic skill he's five gunner? He's a gunner? fighty gunner. He's got two wounds and weapon skill four. It makes total sense. So he's hit out of five. Oh, nothing. I'm gonna have my youth go full auto with the shooter into that bike. How many shots? One, three. Two, not bad. You're hitting on fives because you're just a boy. Or you're just a youth. Just a youth. Nothing. Slugger on my spanner there. Gonna shoot into the buggy. And he thrusted. Yep, so looking for a five. That's cocked, do it again. Nothing. Now that's it for your turn. So both of us have just been slapping each other in the face and not doing any damage. Just shooting or missing or shooting and hitting and doing nothing. So really nothing has got any damage so far, even though I've gotten hits with a heavy shooter and with a crack stick bomb into a vehicle and then all your stuff just totally missed, including the knob uh, with an addition of five. What's up, knob? He's going poorly. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna go back to the digging knobs. This digger boy right here is gonna move four inches because he's moving, well, he's running four inches because he's moving half distance carrying the scrap. And the buggy is gonna go forward six inches. Hmm. Boy with the blunderbuss, he's contemplating coming after the knob but I want scrap, so he's gonna run up here and grab the scrap. Coward. I'm gonna try to maneuver this bike that's one inch, and then a 45 degree turn, and then one inch with another 45 degree turn. And then I'm gonna take my free thrust to go right there, and I'm gonna declare a chase. So I'm gonna be chasing your buggy, so I get to shoot in your shooting phase as well as my shooting phase if I'm still behind you at that point. And I'm not gonna try to turn <laughs> and then run into you, because that would be bad. Come on, <laughs> it'll be fun. Shunt does zero damage to you and one damage to me. Hey, get your stinking paws up. Here we are. Beep, beep, turn. And I think I wanna go back a little further to maximize, yeah, there we go. That'll get maximum coverage on your, on your buggy. And then it'll be a, I think it'll still be a four plus. Oh no, that fully covers your base. That's why I wanted to back up, try to get the, the fatter part of the template. So there we go, he's fine where he is. Now this does mean that if I fail to kill you, you get to automatically board me with no initiative test because I did a slow speed maneuver. But I'm willing to take that chance. I am going to have this dig a boy grab this scrap. So I want all the scraps. Twin linked Scorcha. Now this won't kill your knob, but it could set him on fire. It will set him on fire, actually. So that's kind of good. We're gonna start with your knob. So it's strength five, AP four, and you have two wounds, but it's gonna set you on fire if it actually wounds you. But uh, strength five against your toughness four. You bet. Threes to wound. And it's a wound, and he's on fire. Oh no. Poor fella. So he's on fire, and he's down to a wound. We did hit the vehicle as well, and it does D3 hits against a vehicle. Oh, three again! Oh no. And we got three locations hit. So we've got Gubbins, Gubbins, Driver, but you don't have any Gubbins. So that would be Driver, Engine, Engine. Good thing you got the extra armor. Against the Driver, Strength 5 versus Armor 9, because you have the extra armor. Nothing. And then the two hits against the engines. Now, in case you wondered why I didn't re-roll the armor pen, because twin linked, we're using the 40k rules for that, which is uh, you only re-roll to wound. So against the engines, strength five versus armor 11s, and he's, oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so I need sixes. Oh, that was a, ro it was a rocket before? No, wait, never mind, it was a crack stick bomb, that's what it was. Sixes, nothing, oh, you escaped again. Biker back here is gonna throw a crack stick bomb at your buggy. He did do a thrust. So he's hitting on fives, and it does get hot. And it does get hot. Ooh! So the digger boy takes an automatic wound, saves it on a five plus. Saved! But the grenade also explodes, hitting the vehicle D3 times. Now the explosion is only a strength three hit, so it's D3, so one hit to the bike in the four location, which is the- it's wheels. The wheels, yeah. Strength three versus armor eight, so five. Oh, there you go. Now you're rolling well. 
Hoping for a one here, or a four or five and a lucky spin. Okay, so it's a spin. Hoping for a lucky spin here so I can still chase you. Nope. Actually, technically I can still chase. It'll just be a lot harder because of the movements I'm gonna have to do. To the commenter who pointed out that I forgot to make an ammo check on my Scorcha, you're absolutely right. And so I'm gonna do that right now on a four plus. Oh, it's out of ammo! Woo! I get to shoot it once. I think you only need to shoot it once. Now over here we got the Evi Shooter. It's gonna fire at your track. Full auto. Four shots. Oh no. Didn't use my thrusters, so I hit on fours. We got two ammo checks to make though, and three hits. Let's do the ammo checks. Oh, I still have ammo. The three hits, three locations, and we've got the crew. We've got, what is two? Two is a weapon, so that's your rocket launcher. And then your gubbins, which you don't have any gubbins on this one? No gubbins. So that becomes a six for engines. Start with your crew, strength five versus armor eight. And we get a pen. Result of that being, oh, just a stray shot. So I roll a d6, and I have to roll equal to under how many guys you have in there. Now you have three guys, three crew, plus your driver. So I have to roll three or less. No, I missed them all. Fixed weapon, armor eight, so threes to pen. Oh, we got it! And the result of that is a two, which is luck, not damage. It's at minus one to hit for the rest of the game. And then the engines, armor 10, so I need a five to pen. Oh, it oh. pens! It pens! Oh, no. This could end really poorly for you. Higher the number, the worse the effect. Two, gas engines damage. No gas engine moves for the rest of the game. Hmm. It's your turn. Now he can put out the fire on a six, because nobody's nearby. He'll be able to roll another six. Yeah, he roll a six the first time. That's what... <laughs> oh, 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 close. So now he just moves 2d6 inches in a random direction, and then it does nothing else. So it'll be that way, four inches. It's like, oh, I'm on fire! And he also takes a strength four hit. We gotta do that too. And he takes a strength four hit, wounds him on a four. Yeah, that's a wound, but he gets his armor safe. I kind of want him to fail. I need him to fall over. Nope, he makes it. <laughs> There's the six. There's the six. First youth is going to jump out the side of the vehicle and then move to pick that scrap up. Oh, you're within. Oh, you're trying to see if you're just within moving distance. Yeah, let's see if I'm within moving distance, which I am. You are, so you can still shoot after that, too. Second one, going to jump out as well, and he's going to run. Want to grab the other one? You bet. Need that scrap. Go over to the buggy. Move three. Ah, yeah, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna turn this way. And try to shake off the bike. Yep. We well, gotta finish your gas engine move first before I do anything. And then he's gonna go another three and turn. Oh, head on. Okay, let's see if I can keep up with my bike. So I move an inch and then turn. And then move three more inches and turn. Now I'm not two inches away, so I'm gonna to have to use my free thrust to get right here. And then I'm going to test turn because I wanna be able to stay behind you in case you move again. So leadership test a turn, which I fail. So I move forward D6 inches, one inch, woo! Thankfully, but I do, that does automatically break off the chase because I did fail a turn. So now you can complete your move. Yep. What do you want to do? I'm going to try to thrust. How many inches? Uh, let's call it four. Uh, four is definitely enough. Two plus. Made it. Okay, so you move into base contact with me. And this is a head-on collision. So you're asking for it here. So the question is, okay, so now we just basically just have to play chicken. We both have to secretly choose left, forward, or right. And if we both choose the ones like left, right, or right, left, or forward, forward, then we hit. Otherwise, I swerve out of the way. And I am going forward, and you are going forward. Look at that. So we do get a head-on collision, which will do D6 damage to each of us. And we roll, after all of that, if we're not already immobilized, on a four plus, you become immobilized. So this is your turn. Let's do your damage first. D6 to me. Four damage to me, not bad. The locations, location, location, location. We've got the crew, which is the gunner. We got two on the driver and one on the engines. These are all automatic penetrating hits, by the way. So the crew location, 
What is the result? Ooh, six. So I get hit by the weapon, or in the case of a ram, it'll be strength four hit. So three to wound me, because I'm only toughness three. That's a wound, and I have five up black armor, which I failed. So you roll on the injury table and add one, and I'm dead. That's another five experience. So it's 10 experience for your spanner right there. So we'll just pop this guy off. The weapon is still technically there, so I'm just gonna put it sideways, because you could still hit the weapon. Two hits on the driver, let's do these one at a time. The first one is cocked. The second one is four. Obviously this is also the first one. This is hit as a, by the weapon or strength four hit. So threes to wound him. Nothing. Oh. So the second driver hit is going to be a five. That's also the same thing, so strength four hit, which also does not wound him. And then the engine hit. This is your chance to actually do something now. Two, well, gas engine's damaged, so I can't use my gas engines for the rest of the game. I'm not immobilized yet, so why don't you roll to see if I am four plus to immobilize me? I am not immobilized. Let's do your buggy. Oh no. Worth it? <laughs> Was it worth it? Find out. Two hits on your buggy. Locations. Uh, two and two. Both fixed weapons, which become crew, which you don't have, and that becomes driver. So we got two hits on your driver. First one is a two, so he's caught by the blast. He has to take a leadership test or swerve. Leadership eight for your driver, right? Because he's driving? Correct. Nope, so he swerves. Which way are you gonna swerve? Four plus we to the right. So it'll be this way. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then you move forward D6 inches. That's enough to ram into the thing and run over my guy. Now does this guy have the skid stop? Somebody has a skid stop. Well, I don't have stop. it, no. No. So he's gonna run into my guy who will pass an initiative test of three. See, he passed it, so he jumps out of the way. And then you ram into the wall. And that'll be D3 auto pens for a head-on. So two auto pens, which we will now resolve because we still have the other driver to resolve as well. So we got a driver right here. So we got gubbins, which becomes engine. Oh boy. And four, which is wheels. So let's do the wheels first. I know this is lots of rolling. Upper cog links damage, reduce all moves by one inch, gas and thrust. And then your engine. Four, the outright strut snapped off. It is immobilized. And then the last one is on the driver which is three, he's hit by a strength four hit, which wounds him on a four, nothing. So he just, bam, and he smashes into that and is immobilized. So we don't have to test for immobilization because he already is. The driver's gonna try to get off. <laughs> <laughs> totally can, right? Yeah. So how is that? I know there's a lot of dice rolling in Gorkamorka, but, and some people are like, there's so much dice rolling just for one little consequence. But when you're actually playing the game, it rolls pretty fast. And it does make for some really interesting scenarios that things just, you know, like this, you slammed into me and then you <laughs> swerved off and smashed into that. That could have caused another <laughs> swerve. Who knows what else? Driver's gonna try to jump out. This should have the knob. Oh, that's <laughs> again. Oh, no, Josh. <laughs> Roll a four plus to see if you take a strength three hit. You do not. Right. You was gonna be trying to get off the back, so. Uh, uh. At least you didn't get hurt. Yuf is going to run four inches with his scrap. Just to back there. This Yuf is gonna run and get back on the vehicle with his scrap. Which will make the scrap kind of safe, right? It's a gubbins now. That's true, it protects the vehicle. This Yuf is going to abandon his scrap and he's gonna run to try to eventually help the boss not be on fire. Oh, so that's he'll a run. That's a long distance to go. You could try though. Rocket's definitely gonna hit now. Yeah, it's hitting on a five, so that's that's a guaranteed hit, right? Go ahead. Why do you curse me? I'm not just... cursing you, I'm just telling you. Hey, oh! it's a hit! Now there is an ammo roll to be made. Six plus ammo roll for I'm just glad launcher. to hit with the rocket. I know, for I once. know, right? Nope. So you're out of ammo, but you do get to hit D three times. Two times. Locations. Both crew, which my, uh, there's a gunner and the knob on there. Mm -hmm. So I want you to roll for pen for both of those, because you can't kill the crew completely with this one. No, this is a strength one. seven one as well. Strength seven against armor eight. So yeah, you don't have to roll then, because strength seven against armor eight is auto on ones, and wins don't automatically fail. So two pens against the crew. First crew hit, the result is yeah. off the table. Six, so the crewman is actually hit with the weapon, so we're gonna randomize it. Four plus will be my knob. That's my knob, twos to wound him. And this will ignore his, uh, yeah, it's strength six AP four, so it yep. ignores everything, so 
and that's an instant kill. So you get to instant kill adds plus two to the injury chart, but you don't get to add the plus one because he's a knob. Mm -hmm. So plus two to the injury chart, and he is dead. Congratulations. This officially ends the challenge between our two knobs. <laughs> and then the other crew hit will be three. Oh, it's a straight shot. You're gonna have to roll a one to hit the remaining gunner. I can roll one. Oh. I know you can roll sixes, but I didn't know you could roll ones. No, nope, nothing. Still not bad for his last shot. Got 10 experience out of that. Did a pen and a wound. The spanner is gonna take a shot at the guy with the ooch chopper. I mean, minus one because he thrust it. So he's all sorts of discombobulated. So fives to hit? Fives to hit. Nope. <laughs> That's it for your turn. So back to the digging knobs. This guy's gonna run to get back on board with the scrap. It's my scrap now with all my gubbins. I got four gubbins on this thing now. This digger boy with each chopper is gonna charge. He can charge up to four inches while carrying the scrap. The bike's gonna go forward an inch, turn 45 degrees, move forward three inches, turn 45 degrees. Then I wanna get my crack stick bomb in range. So I am going to take my free thrust to here and then attempt to turn. Leadership seven, he fails it, so he moves forward one inch. So we're still okay. And we're gonna move two inches here just to not count as being stationary for purposes of boarding. Blunder bus boy is gonna move two inches with the scrap. Shooting phase, I'm gonna throw a frag stick bomb at this youth. Now he has minus one ballistic skill for getting shot at, so it's a little harder to hit him. Now I'm gonna to have to first do a gets hot test. Does not get hot. And then we have our scattering. Ooh, it's going far. Because I have a list of scale of three, but down to two. So it goes eight inches. And that lands right here. So somehow, when he threw it, it went up there. Well, I don't even know how, but it doesn't matter. And that did fully cover him, so I don't have to roll to see if it hits him. So strength three hit, so four is to wound. No wound. Now, I don't have to take an ammo check necessarily, but I have to roll to see if I have to take an ammo check. And on the six, I do. No. I'm gonna fire the blunderbuss, even though it'd be hit better against the knob, I'm gonna fire your youth, because the knob is on fire. So I'm not at half range, but I get minus one blizzard skull for shooting at you because you're sneaky and dodgy like that in your camel pants. So I hit on fives. Nothing. I'm gonna huck a crack stick bomb hitting on a five because I thrusted. Misses, but does not get hot. Evie Shooter, full auto into your track. Five shots! Oh, oh no! No, you've got progressively better each time. Maybe I'll fail an ammo check this time. We're hitting on fours. Yeah, fours. Oh, with only two hits, one ammo check. Four plus ammo check, still have ammo. Location for the two hits. We've got two wheel hits and it's strength five against armor eight, so we're looking at threes. Yeah, two pens. And the first one, four. The vehicle swerves. Four plus to be swerving to the right. Okay. Yep. So that's gonna be like this. How many inches forward? Go high, go high. Oh no, he's gonna crash. Actually, you're gonna narrowly miss it. So that's six inches right there. The second one against the wheels is a five. The vehicle spins. Uh oh. See where I end up facing. Oh yeah, that's gonna smack your side into the debris, so on a four plus, you'll take another penetrating hit. No, so you're fine. Woo! Now you've been kind enough to come closer, my driver's gonna throw a frag stick bomb, so gets hot, it does not. Let's do the ammo roll too, six to need an ammo check. No, so it does not get hot, and does not run out of ammo. Don't hit my bike, don't hit my bike. That is a direct hit. No, he's blizzard skill three, so it's a one inch. So it's gonna hit your vehicle on a four plus, does not. We have to do this fight right here. We're both the same initiative, so I'll have my dig a, no, dig a boy with his huge chopper go first. Three uh, attacks on the charge, and he's gonna hit on fours, because in weapon skill three against your four. And we got one hit. Strength five, because there's a huge chopper. So wound on a three. That's a wound, ignoring your armor, and the injury result is knocked down. But he gets to hit back. Two attacks back, hitting on threes. Two hits. Wound you on fours. Two wounds. Woo! Five plus armor. Oh! oh! Mm. Did you hit him in the buckle? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that oh. sucks. Your guy is down. He's not dead. 
It would give my guy five experience if I was keeping track of that for these digging knobs, but I am not right now. <laughs> so we're gonna go back into your turn with, uh, he's not immobilized technically. So you're, you're down one, two guys, is that it? Yep. See, for all that's happened, he still only lost two things. But yeah, kind of sucks. Let's check to see if your knob's still on fire. Oh. Sixes. You could have to roll in these. Sixes, and he'll go out. Oh, the oh. fire goes out! He gets to act normally this turn. I think this is when it turns around. This is when it turns around. Knob's going to go, and he's going to charge this guy. Go for it. I don't think you have to measure that. You're definitely no. within eight inches. So he'll end up. There we go. Okay, boss is not on fire anymore, so I'm running back. He... <laughs> <laughs> it's mine! <laughs> Gunner is going to get out of vehicle. Yeah, what good is a rocket launcher with a luck nut damage that has no ammo left? And place him right there. No check required. Now what does he want to do? Does he want to charge the bike, charge the buggy? Uh, he will charge the bike. Okay, let's go for it. Yep. So Here within eight around. inches, and I gotta take an He's minus one move, but eh. Minus one move? He's minus one move because he had an injured leg. But so that means he would charge six inches, inches yeah. but he's fine. So he has to make an initiative test, which you are stellar at doing. Initiative what, three on him? He's just, yeah, the regular initiative three. Oh no, he failed it. On a four plus, he takes a strength three hit. Yep, strength three hit, fives to wound. Okay, he's not dead. Uh, this boy, no, he's only going, sorry, the, yeah, he's one of the youths. No, he's <laughs> he going, can't get there because it veered away. He's like, oh, come back! <laughs> so yeah, he's gonna run up to get closer and bring his scrap with him. Now, if he's holding on to the scrap at the end of the game, he gets an extra experience. It's a big deal for <laughs> not, <them. laughs> not worth it. Youth on board my truck is gonna shoot full auto into your truck. Come on, big guy, you owe me. Oh, Woo. three shots. Looking for fives. Yeah, because he's a youth, that's right. One ammo check, why don't you do that really quick? Four plus. He still has ammo, he's got two hit locations. You got the weapon and the engines. So the weapon, you were gonna damage on a four. Nope, and the engine's on a six. Nothing. Got one close combat to do, and I am totally dead. You just watch. Well, you know what? I've been calling it this far. You're gonna whiff everything. Stop. Because you know, you have four attacks on charge, hitting on threes, winning on twos. Totally, you can't, you can't do, oh, I failed! Okay, okay, no, don't get excited. Two's to wound. Two wounds, you get to roll twice, adding three, because you insta-killed, and right. it's plus one, because I'm not an up. So as long as you don't roll double ones, he's dead. Four becomes a seven, and he's dead. Five experience for your knob. And you saved your precious spanner, who gets to stand up at the end of your turn. Thanks, boss. So at this point I've lost 3 out of 12 of my guys, which is 25%, which with our rules I can choose the bottle out. We're at 50% we have to actually start testing the bottle out. And I'm actually going to choose the bottle out at this point. I would have liked to have one more scrap counter, but um, I, now that that knob is not on fire, he's just going to pick a target and murder it. Unless he has to try to make an initiative test, in which case he will lose. And so my guys are actually going to bottle out. So we've got two guys with scrap counters. I will have to test to see if they keep them, and although not the one of the vehicle as much, but uh, well, yeah, I'm gonna bottle out now, which means it is a Desert Squigs victory. We have a lot of rolls to do after the game, of course. First, I have to see if I drop any scrap, because if I drop any, then he gets it. Leadership test on the Digga Boy. He drops it, so that's yours, and on a one, I drop it out of the vehicle. Oh, you got both of them. And then I have three serious injuries to roll for, so even though I'm not gonna keep track of these guys in the long run, they could get captured which would allow you, if you bought a slaver, to work them in the mines. So the knob is 55, that's a full recovery. The boy right there is a 51, that's a full recovery. And the gunner is a 15, which is dead. So he just dies, but the other ones get full recovery. There's no serious injuries for you, but your one vehicle was immobilized. So on a two plus, it's fine. On a one, it's crippled. Oh, vehicle permanent damage. So D66. 24, oh, it's a fixer upper. So this recovery is attended with much sucking of teeth and tutting by the spanner, so it can't be used in your next game. Now we have a lot of guys that leveled up, including three of your youths went from youths to boys, is that right? All three of the youths went from youths to boys. Which means they get the automatic plus one toughness. So let's go through them one by one. Your knob leveled up once. Correct. So let's roll for his level up. And he gets a seven, which is a plus one initiative or leadership. Is he at max in either of those? Uh, he's leadership eight and initiative five. 
So no, he can be initiative six and leadership nine. So let's see what it is. Four plus, it'll be leadership. Ooh, cool, he's leadership nine. So now he can never be usurped, unless he dies, of course. We got Monty right here. He's a youth that's become a boy, gets a plus one toughness, and then one other upgrade. What is it gonna be? Eight is a plus one weapon skill or ballistic skill. That's actually suiting because a boy has one higher. So four plus is ballistic skill. Oh, that's too bad. He was a close combat guy. So he's got plus one ballistic skill. And this youth actually leveled up twice and became a boy. So level up number one. Six, that's the plus one weapon skill or ballistic skill. Four plus is ballistic skill. So you got this plus one ballistic skill. And the second upgrade will be five, which is plus one strength or attacks. Four plus is attacks. So he gets plus one bless of skill and plus one attacks. That's a good combo. And the last one went up one level and became a boy. So plus one toughness and seven. And that is a plus one initiative or leadership. So four plus is leadership. Initiative is probably what you want more anyways, because he's not a driver. We got Ugrot who went up a level as well, just for being in the game. And he gets four. Hey, he gets to choose a skill. You gonna roll on driving. You bet. Five is, oh, it's skid stop which is leadership test to stop short of an obstacle. If he passes it, then he doesn't crash into something, but everybody on board must pass a strength test or fall off. Now let's do your income. Now your upkeep cost is five teeth because you have nine guys, just shy of the nine teeth upkeep. And then you get three scraps that you picked up and three that you didn't, so 3d6 plus 3d3. So 3d6, eight plus 3d3, that's two, four, that's two, four, five. So that's 13 so far, plus whatever you work in the mines. And now they're boys, so they actually get D6 each for the mines. So they can work in the mines, and the gunner could work in the mine. Do you want all four of them in the mine? Yeah, let's send all four into the mine. If you roll three sixes, you're in trouble. Maybe. I don't roll sixes, Matthew. You roll lots of sixes. Whoa, okay, no you didn't. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight more. So that's 21 teeth in total. What would you like to spend your teeth on? I'm gonna start by seeing if I can upgrade the rocket launcher to do to what? D6 better range. So longer range? Yep. So you gotta roll on the mech table, which is basically, you wanna roll a four plus, is, is what you're looking for here. Uh -oh. Nope. Oh no. So we add a bit of trouble, and we roll on the bodge table. So yeah, and you still have to pay D6 teeth. Yep. So go ahead and roll D6 teeth. And it costs you two teeth for your effort. The fun thing is, we don't get to roll to see what happens to your weapon until you first fire it. So, yay! Woo -hoo. Yeah, whatever. Randomness is good. I never. What else would you like to upgrade? I'm gonna see if I can go for more armor on my truck. So Make plus one armor. It's the same thing. You want four plus. Uh, and you roll three. Three is actually the probably the best one to fail with, and he just doesn't do anything. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can make my buggy faster. And kind of hope to roll a two, so he fixes if the permanent damage. If I roll damage. a two, uh... Yeah, if you roll a two, then he doesn't do the work you wanted to, but he fixes one permanent damage. So... Oh, oh one! No. He's bodged. So you don't get to use him for a game, and then when you actually do use him, you got to roll on the bodge table. Oh, it still costs you d6 teeth. Okay, it's only one tooth at least. Last little bit, I'm going to give an ooch chop it to my gunner, because he's actually kind of fighty. You know, let's hold on to the rest of the teeth. I'm gonna hold on to the rest to see what the next game holds for me. Okay, well the next game is not gonna be against Josh. It's gonna be against Quirk, and it'll be Muties versus his army. But thanks for watching. Happy wargaming.